Hello, welcome back to another video. Ian here from Dark Blaze Workshop. This one we're painting Luna Love Good. Okay, so in this one we're doing the, the Lion Hat version of Luna, um, totally different to any of the other students that are in the series because obviously she's wearing this hat but she's also wearing uh, normal clothes as well. So let's get on with it. All right, so onto the painting. I'm gonna start with the trousers. As you can see, um, I'm going with the box art with uh, the purple color. So I'll make a start with the serious purple and we'll give it a wash and then build up some highlights. Okay, here we go. Um, as I say, I've got the purple ready. I usually mix uh, about one drop of paint to one drop of water, just to give you an idea. And I'll try and keep it fairly neat, because I usually slap on base coats and I don't really care. But um, I'll try and keep it uh, tidy. Using a size one, I think, Windsor and Newton. I'll try and get rid of that. Mm. There's a thread sticking out the end of my brush. That's bad, it's gone. And because I've added water, you know, it's, it's not going to be a, a totally opaque layer, so we'll probably follow Duncan's advice and go with two thin coats. It's better than going on too thick, isn't it? Well, the coverage of this um, Citadel paint is quite good, actually. quite like this one. I usually use uh, Vallejo colours. Um, well, I use a a variety of different paints really, mostly scale 75 for my Batman stuff and a mix of Citadel but um, I'll try and stick to all Citadel colours for this one alright so that's the first coat done um, we'll give it another coat um, ok so that's the base coat done, that's uh, two thin layers um, I've got the wash now ready to go on um, got quite a bit on my brush so it just flows into the recesses so I'll just concentrate it down here and then the folds let's go lightly everywhere else I don't really want it to pull anywhere else just want to accentuate the shadows might take a while for this to dry um, I'll mention as well what I did with the member who did the plaster base. Um, I just gave a coat of gloss varnish just to seal it. It doesn't really have to be a gloss varnish but that's all I had available so you might see it's a little bit yellow looking. But, um, while, the, while the wash is drying um, I might just put some grey down on the paving slabs. So for the slabs I'm going to be using the Mechanica Standard Grey, um, same again, just um, one drop of paint and a co uh, drop of water, um, probably give it two coats. Ok so I've got the grey ready, and I'm just going to work it around the base. It's a bit of an awkward angle for me but uh, I'll try and get it. really worried about getting any on his shoes at the minute because we'd be painting over it. I might get away with one coat but we'll see how it goes. I'm 
Okay, so I'll leave that to dry. Uh, trousers are still wet, so we'll go on to the, the blue jumper. Um, sleeves are going to be slightly different on the box art, they look quite grey, so um, we'll start with the blue, and these are the ones I've chosen, so same drill, we'll go with the Caldor Sky, I might mix a little bit of black in with it, just to darken it slightly, and then we'll wash it. Okay, so I'll make a start on the blue. I added a little bit of, um, I didn't go for black in the end, I added a little bit of uh, midnight blue in there, it's an old citadel colour and it's quite a dark blue, um, if you use Vallejo it's um, it's not far off uh, dark Prussian blue, it's just to uh, change the tone slightly because I thought the Calador sky was a little bit too bright to start with. I think this might be uh, just right, I think. Oh, we'll see after the wash anyway. The wash will darken things down quite a bit. And then it will be about the highlights then. Okay, so that's one coat. Right, so I'm ready for the blue wash now. I'm um, using the Drakenhof Nightshade. I've added a little bit of water to it. I'm feeling it might be a little strong, but give it a go, see what it does. That's good. And, uh, it's got really stormy here in uh, Wales, so I'll apologise for any sounds of the rain knocking against the roof of my conservatory. Okay, so I'll come back when that's dry. Okay, so the wash on the trousers is finally dry, so we're going back in with the original base coat of uh, Zerius Purple. And I'm just concentrating on the, the raised areas. You can see the tops of the folds. That's where I'm going in with the new purple. I'm going along the creases as well. It's basically anywhere that isn't a shadow. And um, one thing about the paint consistency, it's back to a drop of paint, a drop of water. It's about 50 50. This should dry quite quickly, so I'm going straight in with the second coat. So you need a, a brush with a nice point on it, so you can get into all these folds. So I'm just running the top of the brush over that crease there, so it just picks it out. Okay, so here I've got a 
50-50 mix of the Xerius purple and Gene Steel purple just to bring it um, a lighter tone out so whatever mixture you've got of paint add the same amount of water to that I'm just picking out the highlights now you see it's quite dilute so I'll have to go over this a couple of goes Picking out the raised areas. If you just wanted a, a game in standard, you know, this could be the last stage for you on the trousers, but if you wanted to go a little bit better, we'll go on to the next highlight. Okay, so I've added a little bit more of the Gene Steeler Purple to that mix. A little bit more water. And we're going for another highlight. So I'm just staying on the tops of the folds. So this is where uh, a nice point comes in handy. see this on the camera but it's a very subtle stage and I'll do two coats of that so for this stage I've added um, it's like a, a dark sandy color um, I don't think GW do one really I've, I've pinched a like a dark sand it's like a Vallejo model color dark sand um, maybe Games Workshop do an ochre, uh, I'm sure they do an ochre colour, but it's, you know something like that. I didn't want to add white to it because it'll just change it to a, a pink. I didn't want to go that stark, so a, a yellowy, a yellowy brown because it's it's in the same kind of well, it's it's opposite the colour wheel, isn't it? Um, yellow and purple, so a little bit of a yellowy brown just to lighten things up and it's very thin and I'm just staying top parts so you don't need to do this unless you want a really nice looking mini so I'm just this is like the extreme highlights You can build this up slowly because it's really thin. Just to pick out. And so if you make a mistake, that's fine. You can always go back in with a wash afterwards. Uh, it, it's, it's a subtle difference, but it does. Um, it just makes things more obvious. So this is just to give you an idea what the colour looks like. Um, I mean that's that's if you add white to the the Gene Steeler purple and it's quite a stark purple, but this one is more of a dusty pink. Um, I think it looks quite nice. So what I've done, I've taken some out of the palette now and I've added some more water to it. So it's more or less a pretty much up to a glaze consistency. Let's see, I run it up run it across the top of my nail there you can just about see it so let's try that again I think my nail is too close let's get the excess off and you can just about see it on the nail there just about not sure but that's what I'm going for now and I'm just going to glaze around the top part of the trousers near the pockets um, I might pause it and refocus so you can see it 
so hopefully that's in focus now and you'll be able to see what I do here. Um, again, it's a very subtle thing. Um, I'm just going to angle it so I can actually see what I'm doing. Apologies for the rain noise. But just staying up the top there. If it's too much, you can always go in with the previous colour which was Jean Sealer Purple, do a little glaze of that and that will bring it back but I'm fairly happy with that now. So as you can see where I've, I've gone with the highlights there, it just picks everything out nicely. It may just look like lines but from a distance, you know, when I, when I take some photos later on, it'll look quite nice. So that's the trousers finished. Oh, back onto the jumper now. I've gone with the original mix of the was it the Calador Sky and a little bit of Midnight Blue in it because um, I just want to bring back the the highlights now. But I'm looking at it, the the details on a jumper are obscuring quite a bit of where the highlights are supposed to go. So I'll just pick out what I can and I don't think you're going to notice um, the colour of the jumper once the, the actual details have been picked out and the, I think there's a lot of lighter colour on the on the box art anyway it's like a Christmas kind of jumper I think let's just have a quick look here yeah, like Christmas trees some kind of Christmas tree anyway but that'll be picked out in a you know a lot lighter um, maybe a maybe a grey or light grey with a bit of blue in it. But we'll see how it goes. So I'm not really going to do a lot of highlighting on the actual you know the base of the jumper. So let's pick out what I can. I can still see folds, which runs along here and there. A little bit there, and where the chest might be. Go around the bottom edge of the jumper as well. Uh, I'll go one shade lighter on this, so it'll be pure Calador sky now. So same again, it's uh, one drop of water, one drop of paint. I was going in the same areas. Stay out of the shadows. Slightly more to work with on the back, I think. Um, let's move my pie out of the way. So we got a fold there and there. So if you think this part here is going to be in shadow, so I'll just pick out where the actual folds are. entirely happy with that last bit so I've added a bit of the is it Hoeth blue to the Caldor sky so it's about 50-50 mix and I've diluted it again and I'm just going to pick out the bottom of the jumper on the folds and the bottom edge of the jumper as well Again, it's quite subtle. Um, I've already done the back part. I'll re 
reinforce it now. I'm going to have to turn on this side. Sorry to see what I'm doing. the same technique as we used on the trousers so I'm, I'm staying up the top part of each crease I think that will do so we'll concentrate on the the detail of the jumper now the little signs as you can probably see I made a little start on it I've, I've added um, some white to that hoeth blue just to start with um, and I've had a go, <laughs> I've had a go off camera and it's, it's quite difficult to get into position without knocking the camera out of the way so I'll just try and pick out. I've, I've decided they're like little Christmas trees um, but I'm going to have to do this off camera because there's no way I can uh, actually do it but it's just a, a basic um, brush stroke down at an angle just to pick out the detail then one that way and then a couple that way maybe and there seems to be a little red dot at the end of them um, it must be like a tree decoration uh, so I'll do that off camera and if I use a lighter colour I shall let you know Okay, so what I did here, um, I added uh, a little bit of white to the Hoeth blue just to pick out the the shape. And what I did then, I went back with the remember that um, the dark blue mix, and I just went in between just to separate separate lines, or they look like branches really. Um, and then I got the side of my brush and went over with a uh, ivory just to pick out the raised details then and I think I'm gonna just leave it as that um, the other thing I did was the necklace there I picked out the line of the necklace and the actual pendant so for the, the lion's headdress part I'm gonna be using these two um, if I need to use a highlight I'll probably go for a bone colour but we'll see how it goes and maybe an Agrax wash after the the first coat but we'll see how it goes well because it's a larger area you can afford to go back up uh, up the sizes in brushes so this is a size one again I won't film the whole thing but yeah give you an idea it's um, same again it's one part paint one part water I think I'll do the, the face of the line in this as well but if you look at the box art you'll see the face of the line is a lot lighter than the actual hair so I think I'm gonna play on that and keep it keep the hair a lot darker particularly if she's got uh, blonde hair anyway I want that to be a lot lighter than the actual lion. So there we go, the first coat. Right, so I had a look at the box art and the shadows are quite a lot darker, so I'm gonna give it a wash with Agrax. Agrax Earth Shade is a Citadel wash. Um, as you can see I've got loads on my brush. I just let it settle into the recesses. I'll be uh, a little more careful when you come down underneath the chin. The good thing about this, uh, the hat, is that this dark brown that will be obviously highlighted up um, it'll actually frame the face so the, um, the skin will appear to be a lot brighter than it actually is so 
and, you know, it tricks the eye. So we won't have to go too bright on the uh, the skin, I think. Famous last words. Uh, we'll see how it goes. That's my mantra. We'll see how it goes. Because I'm just winging this, to be fairly honest. That's my first Harry Potter miniature. It's probably yours too. Really excited about the, the rest of the stuff coming out, hopefully this month. I went all in. So hopefully uh, I can bring you a lot more painted tutorials as time goes on. Right, so I'll leave that dry and we'll come back. Okay, so we've got a nice bit of contrast there with the Agrax wash. And now I'm going back in with the, the original um, XV88 and I'm going to pick out all the strands. I'm trying to stay away from the shadow areas. Because obviously you've, you've put that wash on you don't want to um, like waste all that con contrast that you've just created. We'll do this over two layers and then when we put another colour on, I think it's uh, Balor Brown or Baylor Brown, it's the next one. Um, Say so if that's the length of the the strand of hair, we'll do XV88 from there down, but the bolo brown or balo brown will be about halfway down it. So you keep the shadow towards the root of the hair. Let's try some on this side. There's a, a far easier way of picking out the details and that's with a dry brush. There's, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube about dry brushing. Use the same paint, you wouldn't have to water it down. Just um, use an old brush. Don't, don't use the one with a, a really nice point on it for your dry brushing because it wrecks it. So I'll give that another coat and we shall come back. So uh, moving on to the highlight then, this is, um, I'm going to call it Balor Brown. <laughs> Balor sounds a bit, um, I don't know, maybe Game of thrones -y, doesn't it? Uh, um, so yeah, we're not doing the whole strand, we're doing like the bottom half of the strand. Just picking it out. I'll take a couple of coats. I forgot to do the ears on the other one. So I'll just outline the ears because they're going to be darker inside. Staying away from the shadows, we're keeping the contrast going. So what I'm also going to do with this colour is to start on the, the actual face of the lion. So I'm going to water it down just a little bit more to be on the safe side because um, I don't want it too opaque to start with. So about one drop of paint, one drop of water, and I'm staying at the top of the cheek, top of the snout. the The actual nose part is quite dark. I 
can't really get to that with the camera in the way so I'm gonna have to um, do it off camera but stay up towards the top part of the face with this colour now because it's going to end up a lot lighter than the rest of it so that's the top of the cheek eyebrow top of the snout so I'm going to give another coat of the uh, Baylor brown but this time I've added a little bit of uh, let's check that Zandri dust to it and same again I'm just gonna pick out the odd strand now probably the the larger ones Don't want to do everyone because um, I think it'll spoil it. Camera might not pick these up, but um, it does make a difference. I'll do the uh, I'll do the back off camera. I'll refocus now. So this time it is pure Zandri dust. So I'm going to start on the actual face of the lion now. So that will be that top part there. the cheek and the bridge of the nose and the eyes and the outside of the ear I'll be able to show you differently on this angle here um, so the eyebrow and the cheek and the snouty bit and I'm going to build this up over a couple of layers to get a nice bit of contrast on it hopefully um, the next bit I think we'll do the eyes and the nose so that's going to be a lot darker colour so I'll get some Rhinox hide for that All right apologies but I had to do the the Rhinox hide stage off camera um, that's the the colour it's a really dark brown and basically it's just a triangle on his nose and a line down and then uh, the same paint has gone into the eye sockets there and also in the ear cavities so they're just basic circles I'll pick out the eyes later on with a, a lighter colour because that's um, it looks quite yellowy on the on the box art but um, no. I'll do that one later on. Um, the other thing you might want to do now, but I'd, I'd prefer it to leave it after, is use that same Rhinox hide to frame the skin. But I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to later on because I've got quite a steady hand. I'm okay to do that afterwards, but you might want to consider doing it now um, before you start putting the skin on. So um, I'm going back to the face again now with the Zandri dust I'm going to give it another coat just to bring out the detail okay so using the Zandri dust in the same areas of the, the lion's face so I'm going up up here it's starting to define the the shapes now, so I'll go on the bridge of the nose as well. I'll come around this way. Okay, so 
and I can start to add some more colour to the highlight now. Um, probably a bone colour. Uh, we'll come. Okay, so I've added some bone. Um, it's shabti bone to the Zandri dust. So about 50-50 mix now. Um, I've added a bit more water to it, so um, we're going to give that a go. I'm going to test it first on my nail. So that's quite opaque. I don't really want that. So keep keep the paint on your brush. Dip the tip into your water, and then run your brush on a tissue, and that'll dilute the paint you've got on your brush. And you'll see it's a lot more transparent now. That's the kind of consistency you want now for the the next stage which is I'm staying up towards the top part of each bit Let's flip it around quickly I'm going to try another coat to that now. I'm just uh, testing it. Okay. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that the the highlights are building up nicely now because we want the face a lot lighter than the actual fur okay it probably needs about another Two coats, I think, to actually bring it, bring it out a bit more. Um, I'll try. I'll dot the eyes, and uh, I'll come back after another coat, and you can hopefully see a difference. Okay, so that's another two coats of the same consistency. What you can do, if you want it lighter again, I'd add more, more bleach bone to it, or shabti bone, maybe with a little bit of ochre in it just to tone it down a bit um, but keep that consistency almost to well, it's in between a glaze and a wash and it'll go on quite thin then um, so I'm just gonna I'll do the eyes off camera and then when we come back we'll start on the sleeves I think okay these are, these will be the colors for the sleeve um, I usually do a lot of my uh, greys using this uh, combination, but I've never tried using Fang as a shadow. So we'll we'll see how it goes. I'll put the the base coat on, and I might do a highlight, and then I'll see if I need to do um, a shadow or not. Because usually, if I start off with that, it's it's, um, it's just a case of highlighting up and then adding a little bit of white to this one. But we'll see how it goes. So starting off with the warp fiend grey then. This will probably take two coats, I would have thought, to get a decent, um, decent coverage. No. 
Okay, so that's two coats of the warp fiend grey. So I've decided to go for a darker tone for the shadows. Um, this is uh, the fang, um, and I'm just gonna—I'm not gonna use it as a wash. I'm just gonna like layer it into where the creases are. So whenever you see a fold. Just put it in there and it'll just give a little bit of contrast when we um, I'll go back in with Warp Fiend Grey after this and it'll just give a nice little bit of contrast. So I've got a line there, so I'll go there. And there. You don't have to be perfect with it because we've got a highlight up from here now. Okay. Right, so I'm swapping back to the Warp Fiend Grey now. So I'm just going to layer on everywhere that's not in shadow. So keep away from where you were with the, uh, the fan colour. Here we go, the next highlight. You can see we're starting to build up the contrast now with the highlight. I'm just picking out the tops of the folds now. This is where you want a brush with a good point on it. So the next layer now is pure slash grey. Um, it's about one part paint to one part water. And I'm just focusing on the top of the folds and the top of the arms. Very small strokes. Okay so the final stage for the sleeves is I've added a little bit of um, Vallejo's ivory to the slanish grey. I've done one highlight already hopefully you can see where I've worked on the, the folds so I'm just going to strengthen that now. It's quite dilute I'd say it's yeah, it's more than 50% water. I'd say about 60% water and 40% paint. So you're getting into... I'm getting hair sticking out my, uh, my brush now. Um, it's getting into washy, kind of glazy territory. And this is just the sharpest edges of the, the creases and on the top of our arm there. Right, in an effort to speed things up a bit, I've done the hair and the skin. Uh, skin, I'm using some scale colour, so you, you want a light skin tone and you want a, an even lighter one again. But I'm using this for the shadows. And for the hair I used a uh, bone colour but added a little bit of yellow into it just to get the um, the blonde colour. Um, so the highlights are going to be your shabdi bone for the hair and then I'll probably add a little bit of ivory to that. And for the skin I think we might have to use um, another colour. 
Oh, Buckles Brown is oh, it's a lovely brown colour for shadows on the skin. So I use that for the eye sockets and maybe in between the lips. Um, yeah, so we'll crack on with that now. So the skin and the hair um, can be washed with uh, a nice sepia wash. I'm using the Seraphim sepia from GW. And the same drill, just get it into the recesses. So the eye sockets and cheekbones and the mouth area. And we'll leave that dry. We'll come back and start highlighting. Okay, so the hair and skin are almost dry. Um, what I've done in the meantime is uh, the boots. I used cavalry brown, it's a nice reddy brown for the boots and then this uh, blue green for the socks. I can't really make out what's on the box art really but it looks like socks. <laughs> Look like stripy socks but I'm just going to keep them the, the one colour for now. Um, so once everything's dry we'll uh, crack on with the hair and skin but in the meantime I'll be doing an Agrax wash on the boots. I'm just going to give it a quick wash with this good stuff. It's like shade in a bottle really. Um, and I'm just going to slap it on. Just let it pool into the recesses like we've been doing all the other videos. I think this might have to go into a three part of myself but it's, it's getting on for about 40 minutes now. I'll try and make them shorter next time, but I just wanted to make a an effort on the first one. You know. Okay, so we'll leave that dry and we'll come back with the skin. So what I've done off camera, I made a really thin, um, almost like a wash glaze type consistency for the eye socket. So I've gone into the eye sockets, I've gone down the side of the nose and you know that little night, uh, the little line that runs from uh, your nostril and down past your mouth in a diagonal, I've done those and I've gone really thinly in between the lips it's just to give a little bit of contrast there because we're going to start highlighting now and that will start to make the, the features really stand out. So we're going to start off with um, the, the light skin. Um, and we're going to be, for females, I was, I was talking to somebody earlier today about um, Luna's face. And um, because um, ladies' faces are more uh, more of a triangle shape than a, a you know a man has got quite a square jaw. A lady's got like a pointed jaw. So we're gonna it's like a T shape. So we're gonna go across the cheeks, across the bridge of the nose, top of the the lip. You know where the where a mustache would sit on a man, and the top of the chin there. And we're not going to touch the jaws either side or the, well, you might get a little bit on the forehead. So here we go. Um, yeah, as I said, it's pale skin. It's quite a thin consistency. And I'm going to try and get my head in between the light and the camera <laughs> so we can see. So I'm going to pause and re. Okay, here we go. So, as I said, the bridge of the nose, a little bit of the forehead. I'm not entirely sure the camera will pick some of this up because of the, the shade um, wash, the CPL wash, didn't really 
pool on the forehead or the top of the cheeks anyway so I'm just accentuating so that's under the eye and that's above where you put a dark line you know that diagonal line I was on about and we're doing the moustache top lip I'll stick on this side because it's quite awkward to do the other side but this section will be exactly the same on the other side so that's the pale skin going on I'm going to do a 50-50 mix now of the, the pale skin and the light skin I'm just mixing it on the palette same kind of consistency, it's quite thin You might start to see it coming then. With your your highlights now, if I went to the the lighter skin, the lighter skin tone, I'd start from about underneath uh, her eyeball and then up up that way along the cheekbone so you don't get really light under here it's lighter on the sides so that's what we're looking for on this one and then once these highlights are done we'll be glazing in with a, a darker colour then maybe a red or a you want to get really fancy, you put some green in it, but or even some. I've seen some people undercoat or do do green as their first colour and then do skin on top of that. It does quite uh, quite a nice effect. So that's the cheekbone, and I'm on top of the line there. And do this side of the forehead and a beak, top of the lip and the chin. And let's see, I'm not going near the jaw or the cheeks, just sticking on the cheekbone. So, I'm going to give it one more coat. So, this time I'm going in with a pure pale skin. really thin I'll try and show you here well, that is quite strong actually so I'm just going to dip my brush in the water run it across the paper towel and we'll try again oh, that's a lot better I'm just working down the nose so the pigment will sort of gather on the end of a end of her nose and I'm starting in the middle of the cheekbone and up towards the eye. I'm not gonna bother going on top of the line because this is more or less an extreme highlight. So I'll do the forehead down the nose again. I'll try and get this one in here as well. It might not be apparent that the paint is going on so I'm you know, with one or two strokes so it'll take quite a few strokes just to build it up okay we're getting there <laughs> I'll try and put the eyes as you can see I've done one side um, what I tend to do is go in with the brush from the side and just make a line really I'm, I'm not bothered about making you know making the paint fill the whole eyeball and the good thing about it is that um, If it is too big, you just just go back in with your shadow colour, which was the was it the Arbuckles brown, 
just cover it over and start again, do it again. I use ivory for eyes because if the white looks just too stark, you know, it looks like a stark staring mad at you, so um, I'll do ivory. Um, I think it's a much nicer uh, colour because you're not going to see, you know, pure white eyes. Um, I'm going to try and put a little dot of black right in the middle. But it's the same again, same principle, but if you start from here and say, let's draw it, let's draw it on here. Quick tutorial. <laughs> Alright, so I've lined the eye with the Arbuckle's brand. I fill it. Well, I'll do a line of ivory. It's not going to work because the paint is running. And then if I pretend that uh, that's left runny. I've got black on my brush. I'll just go there. And it just sits in the middle of the uh, the, the ivory part. Yeah, that's not good as there is. Can't see it because it's um, it's quite runny. But that's the principle behind it anyway. And I think I think we're getting there. I'm just gonna dot the eyes off camera because I can't get in. So back to the hair then. I'm gonna use the Shabdi bone now to highlight. And as we did previously, it's just picking out. Okay, so for the boots, you know, we did um, Cavalry Brown as the, the base coat, then we washed it with Agrax. I highlighted it by, well, I tried to keep using the colours I've already got on the palette. So I mixed the Cavalry Brown, which is this one here, and I used the, the base coat for Luna's hair. And I mixed them together and it gave a nice sort of fleshy colour and I thought that was perfect so that's what I've done across the top of the boots just a thin highlight and then I put a, a blob of cavalry brown in the in the center of the you know the top of the foot there and I mixed a little bit of our buckles brown and I, I put a, a little a little dab of that in the same spot um, I'm gonna call it finished now uh, yeah I'm, I'm happy with that so just to finish off um, I did uh, I used Arbuckle's brown because it's, it's quite a dark brown as you probably know by now I just finished off with a, a line Separating the trousers and the jumper, and then the the top of the the jumper and the sleeves, and in between the sleeves and the skin, it's just the just gives a little bit more um, definition to you know the areas that you are painting. I think it um, it finishes it off nicely, and obviously you probably noticed that I've swapped the bases over. There's a tutorial for the bases in episode number three so uh, if, if you fancy the bases they're uh, quite easy to do and really cheap to make and uh, uh, personally I think they're an improvement on the the plastic ones that night models um, provide so there we are um, that's Harry Potter miniature number one done um, there's many more to come hopefully and I'm planning to do, well, as many tutorials as I can, really. And as I said, I'm, I'm trying to help people in the in the community to try and raise their game. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of guys out there who have never painted before, and hopefully this will get them into it, really. Um, it's really easy to pick up, so stick with it. 
Um, if you get stuck on a technique, you know, send us a message in the in the comments below. Uh, more than happy to help out, and um, you know, don't limit yourself to just this channel. You know, look at other painters and how they do techniques like dry brushing and blending and using washes and stuff like that. There's loads of material out there. So um, yeah, and um, if if you want to see different paint ranges used, you know, I'll, I'll try and incorporate that if you want to as well. So yeah, it's been really great doing this mini. I love it. Um, the quality is amazing, and I just can't wait to get my hands on some more. So there we are. That's Luna done. So yeah, hopefully we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks very much. And there we go, Miss Lovegood is done. Um, really enjoyed this one. It's one of my favourite characters from the film, so uh, I'm really glad this turned out so well. Um, as always, any comments, um, greatly appreciated. Uh, if you need any help, get in touch below. I'll try and help you out. And uh, that's it for me for now. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.